Hey movie lovers, welcome to What's in Cinemas. I'm Charlie David Page, I'm the editor at Switch. Join me as I take you through what's hitting the big screen in July 2023. Knock knock, who's there? It's Insidious, The Red Door. 10 years after the Lambert family were first terrorized, they try to put their demons to rest once and for all, going deeper into the further than ever before as they face their family's dark past. I'm seeing crazy stuff. I think these drawings could be clues from my past. There's so much you don't know. And I was too scared to tell you the truth. Our family has been keeping secrets. They suppressed our memories, but I can still feel something following us. There's only one way to find out. The original cast is back, including patriarch Patrick Wilson, who also directs this installment. And why wouldn't you be? Even the mediocrely performing Last Key, the fourth in this series, which received just 50% as an audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, still raked in more than 16 times its budget. Still, fans of the franchise will be hoping for something better for the so-called terrifying conclusion when Insidious The Red Door hit cinemas on the 6th of July. Next up, it's time to take the wildest ride of your life, a joyride. Four friends, played by Stephanie Hsu, Ashley Park, Sherry Kohler and Sabrina Wu, set out on a journey of discovery across China to find Park's character Audrey's birth mother. But despite this well-meaning outing, things quickly get messy. So nice to see an American. What do you do for work? Hmm? Hmm? If the cops are doing a bag check. Oh my god, you're a drug dealer! <laughs> you're a drug dealers now, bitches! We can't get caught with drugs in China. You gonna plug or you gonna play? Group project! We gotta blow crazy, honey! <laughs> honey, you good? Are they coming out? Yeah, but only seven, and I think I put an eight. Just push, pull, twist this! It's not a puppet, it's my asshole! I should never come to China. People are always thinking I have this perfect life, but I don't belong anywhere. If you do not know where you come from, how do you know who you are? Let's find your birth mother. Will you guys come with me? Yes, bitch! The film is written and directed by Adele Lim in her directorial debut. And just a side note, Liz here at Switch is a huge fan. She is the Malaysian writer best known for her work on Crazy Rich Asians. And despite its success, she ended up turning down writing the sequel for the film because she was offered less money than her white co-writer. Go figure. Well, now here we are with Joyride, which looks about as over the top as you can get for a comedy, doing its part for diversity while pushing the bar for what's acceptable to be shown on a movie screen. To see exactly what I mean, make sure you click up top now to watch the film's Red Band trailer. It's time to take a look at what it means to live a meaningful life in other people's children. 40-year-old Parisian high school teacher Rachel, played by Virginie Efira, is inspired by her work and close to her friends, sister and widowed father. But then she meets the charming and recently separated Ali, played by Rochette Zem, and Rachel commences a relationship not just with him, but also his four-year-old daughter Layla. Bonjour. Layla? À quel âge, Layla? Quatre ans et demi. Wow. Peut-être faire un petit bisou? Ça va mon cœur Oui <rire> euh, Bonjour Alice, moi je suis Rachel. Maman Bonjour Rachel. Bah alors oui, les bisous, les bonjour à Rachel. Hmm? Pourquoi Rachel est tout le temps là Moi je veux qu'il s'en aille. Mais si tu crois un jour que... Tu Elle a 5 ans. Pas bah, t'apprendre qu'à cet âge-là, ça veut absolument rien dire. Tu dirais que tu fais semblant de ne pas comprendre que je m'attache à elle. À la fin de la journée, c'est vous, son père et sa mère. Pour toujours. Rebecca Zlotowski, the film's writer and director, began adopting the novel Your Ticket is No Longer Valid. It was about an aging businessman whose power was failing him, but started seeing elements of herself in the story and so switched the lead character to a childless 40-year-old woman. However, it ended up during pre-production, she actually got pregnant and ended up giving birth to her first child once the film wrapped. 
The New Boy is Warwick Thornton's new film. Not only that, it's also the first Australian film that Kate Blanchett has worked on in years. Now, it premiered at Cannes in the Uncertain Regards section, and it was also the opening night film to the Sydney Film Festival. Set in 1940s Australia, a nine-year-old Aboriginal orphan boy played by newcomer Aspen Reed is taken to a monastery run by a renegade nun, that's Blanchette. After a shaky start, he is learning to read and to write. He has a passion for Christ, and I feel that he may even follow in my footsteps. It looks visually spectacular. We can't wait to check this out for ourselves. And we're going to be giving you the chance to win one of five double passes to see the new boy in cinemas thanks to Roadshow. So head to maketheswitch.com.au until the 2nd of July to enter. Next up, your mission, if you choose to accept it, and you should, is to check out Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Ethan Hunt and his IMF team embark on their most dangerous mission yet, to track down a terrifying new weapon that threatens all of humanity before it falls into the wrong hands. But this mission also forces Ethan to consider what matters more, the mission or the lives of those he loves. The world is changing. Truth is vanishing. War is coming. It's been a long time, friend. You've no idea the power I represent. It knows your story and how it ends. Listen to me. The world's coming after you. His fate is written. Shall we write yours too? If anything happens to them, there's no place that I won't go to kill you. That is right now. Joel here at Switch has been doing some calculations. It's been 27 years since the first Mission Impossible, 27 years after the first Bond film, Dr. No, there'd been four James Bonds. So by his reckoning, Tom Cruise may very well actually be eternal. Now you can make up your mind for yourself when you check out the stunts in the latest trailer. Click up top to check it out now. Now for a new twist on a classic, let's take a look at Carmen. This is being described as a complete reimagining from director Benjamin Milpier, with an original score and songs to go along with it. Melissa Barrera is in the titular role, while Paul Mescal plays the love interest Aiden. The film takes place in modern-day Mexico, with Carmen looking to flee to the US after her mother's killed. Carmen? Mi mamá me dijo que eran como hermanas. Hermanas de vida y hermanas de muerte. Tus pies saben bailar. Son mariposas. Recuerda siempre que de lo que huyes lo acabarás encontrando, vayas donde vayas. Soñando, danzando, ser libre, baila. This is Milpier's directorial debut. The esteemed choreographer shot the film in Australia. Now, Liz's review of Carmen will be hitting the Switch website shortly, and we'll be sure to add it to the description of this video once it's up. From one form of art to another, let's delve into Dali land. This portrait of Salvador Dali, as portrayed by Ben Kingsley, is seen through the eyes of young gallery assistant James Linton, played by Christopher Briney, and it follows the legendary painter at 70, dreading death and in a personal crisis. Who are you? I'm James Linton. Dali is the power. She does the deals and handles the money. You give us money, we give you a painting. Whatever you do, you must not insult her. I need a new assistant. I will borrow this boy. Because if you do, you are out. This part is fucking great. I need many beautiful asses. <laughs> is he getting any work done? What's going on? It's complicated. So this is a fake. Paint! You stole from Dali. Salvador Dali is a genius. I need her. To push me. Dali, there are bad things going on around you. 
I give you everything. Felix, don't take him seriously anymore. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. The film is directed by Mary Harron, the director of American Psycho. This is just her latest biopic, having previously directed I Shot Andy Warhol, The Notorious Betty Page, The Anna Nicole Story, and Charlie Says, which is a look inside Charles Manson's cult. Now, we'll be giving away five double passes so that you can check out this work of art for yourself thanks to Kismet. Simply head to makethetheswitch.com.au between the 2nd and 9th of July to enter. Now it's time for the return of a cult favourite to the big screen. Fleabag is back. Phoebe Waller-Bridge surprises with the show that started the phenomenon of the brutally honest yet relatable character. Let's take a look at a clip from the show. I snort laugh at myself and then catch the eye of an attractive looking man. Oh. Well, he is attractive and holding his paper to about here. It all gets a bit rodenty from the nose down. But it's good enough for some eye fucking on the tube. He smiles at me with his tiny mouth. I smile back. He looks down. I look down. And then we both look up at the same time. Chris will be checking out NT Live's recording of Fleabag to see if it still lives up in a post-pandemic world. We'll add the link to his review in the description of this video once it goes live. Next up, to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Psychopaths animated series, Psychopaths Providence is hitting the big screen. Set in the year 2118, Akane Sunomore receives a report of the death of a professor aboard a foreign vessel. The peace brokers are behind the incident, a paramilitary organization who wanted his research papers. Reunited with Shinya Kogami, he and Akane quickly realized the papers could reveal a truth that would shake the Japanese government. Next up, it is time for two of the biggest films of the year. First up, let's get Plastic Fantastic with Barbie. In this hugely hyped adaptation from Greta Gerwig and co-writer Noam Baumbach, Margot Robbie plays Barbie. Well, plays a Barbie? The Barbie? The main Barbie? I mean, let's just say she plays the Barbie who snaps out of the utopia life they're all living in and starts to have an existential crisis. You can find me under the lights, diamonds under my eyes. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday and so is tomorrow and every day from now until forever. Do you guys ever think about dying? When my heart breaks. Some things have been happening that might be related. When my world shakes. Cold shower Ooh. falling off my roof. Ah! And my heels are on the ground. <gasps> Black feet! What do I have to do? You have to go to the real world. You can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. The choice is now yours. The first one. The high heel. You have to want to know, okay? Do it again. There's so much attention to detail that's gone into replicating Barbie Land. Working with production designer Sarah Greenwood, Gerwig has really tried to bring this toy to life. There's a fantastic behind the scenes video from Architectural Digest that we've added into the description of this video. Margot Robbie shows us around on set and you get to hear a lot of the rationale as to the choices that they've made. It's a really in-depth watch. Now, the yin to Barbie's yang, which sees Christopher Nolan returning to our big screens for Oppenheimer. Killian Murphy takes the lead as US scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer, with this three hour epic primarily centering on the development of the atomic bomb as World War II escalates. You're the great improviser, but this, you can't do in your head. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world. Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want for theory alone? Zero would be nice. This is a matter of life and death. But I can perform this miracle. World War II would be over. 
our boys would come home. That's happening, isn't it? The world will remember this day. Our work here will ensure a peace mankind has never seen. Until somebody builds a bigger one. We know Nolan is dedicated to his craft. He's a stickler for shooting on film, and he loves working with the IMAX 65mm format. But he's really gone above and beyond with Oppenheimer. Rather than using CGI, the Oscar-nominated director uses practical effects to recreate a nuclear explosion. To see what else Christopher Nolan has up his sleeve, click up top now to watch the latest trailer of Oppenheimer. And if you'd like to see this for yourself in cinemas, we'll be giving away five double passes between the 9th and the 16th of July, thanks to Universal. Just head to maketheswitch.com.au. Now, one of the bravest films going head to head with those two Goliaths, it's Sugar and Stars. This looks to be a sweet tale, pun intended, of Yazid, who dreams to become one of the world's finest pastry chefs. Raised between foster homes and group homes, the young man will have to work hard to achieve his goal. Ton foyer a pas mille façons de s'en sortir. C'est plus possible de le garder, ça devient trop grave. Yazid, il a un talent, il est en train de le développer, faut pas tout casser. C'est quoi tout ça Ils vont me détruire si je reste ici. Ça, je vous en supplie, laissez-moi y croire, s'il vous plaît. Ça va changer ma vie. Est-ce que l'un d'entre vous va faire partie de l'équipe de France de pâtisserie Bravo. MBF, meilleur bouillule de France. Je prépare les championnats du monde et j'ai besoin d'un sponsor. Plus de nerfs là, t'es en train de relâcher, t'es mou là Chef, comment on devient le meilleur C'est pas un pari presse ça, c'est un pari chias. Tu veux être le meilleur ou un génie de la pâtisserie Oui. The film is adapted from Yazid Ichimrahim's autobiographical book of a Moroccan boy who moved to Paris and set his sights on dessert as a dream. It's time to take a trip now to the Catalonian countryside in Alcaraz. The story sees a family of farmers who have harvested peaches for generations under threat when the owner of the land they work on ready to up and sell from under them. This is writer and director Carla Simon's follow-up to Summer 1993, and the film took home 17 awards, including the Golden Bear at the 2022 Berlin International Film Festival. It was also Spain's submission for the 95th Academy Awards. And just maybe it should be, considering all of the locals in the film were non-professionals found in the area. Next up, it's the rise of the machines in Simulant. Set in the future, a humanoid enlists a global hacker to remove all restrictions on his thoughts and capabilities, triggering an AI uprising and a government manhunt to eliminate the rise of the machine consciousness. The ongoing debate around simulant sentience intensifies. Both gen, female! Skeptics continue to voice concern over simulant integration into society. You know she's a simulant. Simulant? Are you sure? The sim has been hacked. Somebody altered the restrictions. So someone made it possible for it to hurt me. Did you notice anything unusual about his behavior? He didn't know that he was a sim. He was having dreams about his accident. There's a lot of bad code in you right now. All I want to do is eliminate those restraints so that you can be free. What did you do to me? Expand! Despite some big names, including Sam Worthington, Simu Liu, Jordana Brewster, and Robbie Amell, the Canadian film hasn't received a whole heap of attention. So if sci-fi is your thing, it might be worth checking out. But just a warning, make sure you have a look at the Rotten Tomatoes audience score first. Fighting for your life and your stash of gold against the Nazis during World War II, it has to be Sisu. When a former legendary Finnish commando and prospector strikes at Lucky, he has to defend himself and his treasure from a German death squad led by a brutal SS officer. He was a Finnish commando. He lost his home and his family in the war. He became a one-man death squad. Ah! He's one mean motherfucker that you do not want to mess with. 
This film recently screened in Sydney Film Festival's Freak Me Out strand, known for films more on the gory side. So don't go in expecting this to be a historical drama. Finally, let's high five a bit of Aussie horror in Talk To Me. A group of friends discover an embalmed hand that can conjure spirits and they become hooked on the new thrill until things go too far and they unleash terrifying supernatural forces. You know the drill. Say, talk to me. Talk to me. <gasps> Haley, fucking stop it, he's choking! Oh. 83 seconds, get it off him! What if we open the door but we didn't shut it? Delete it. <laughs> Delete it, come on! The spirits, <laughs> they followed us. We have to do something! You want to do it again? The film is brought to us by twin filmmaking brothers Danny and Michael Filippo, better known as Rucka Rucka. A24 has picked this one up to distribute in the US, so it definitely has that special something. Now, Ashley will be checking out Talk To Me, so we'll be sure to add the link to her review to this video's description once it's gone live on the Switch website. Plus, we'll be offering you the chance to check it out for yourself, thanks to Maslow and Umbrella. Just head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 16th and the 23rd of July for your chance to win. And that's what's in cinemas this month. Now, the Switch website doesn't have any advertising on it because we think that it's really important to keep the films front and center. So we've got a Ko-fi and a Patreon page, and any support that you can offer is hugely beneficial. It helps to keep independent film journalism alive. We also have our YouTube page, and you can subscribe to it if you found this video useful. We have heaps of interviews, reviews, and videos like this. So if you like it, Follow it right here at Switch. Let's go.